Hi, this is Isabel Florence and you are listening to You Are Light Podcast, a safe space where we talk about mental health and well-being. Hello, my loves. Today we're going to talk about control. So let's first understand why this came up for me and why I want to talk about it. I realized that small things were getting to me in a way that they had never before. I was getting angry at little things in my life. I'm usually someone quite peaceful and calm and I don't really get angry. When I was speaking to my therapist, we realized that by moving country... I had changed my whole environment, my whole daily routine, my whole life in a way. And because I felt overwhelmed with this amount of change this quickly, I wasn't really aware of this consciously. By having become so overwhelmed, I had coping mechanisms show up trying to protect me and we were able to recognize very clearly two coping mechanisms that were at the forefront of this stress this anxiety this anger that felt really petty one was control and the second one was perfectionism we're going to talk about control today we're going to talk about perfectionism next week control is all about having an attachment to your expectation wanting a certain outcome every time an outcome that you have created in your mind control gives you a sense of relief a sense of calm in a way when you feel like you understand how things are happening and how they will happen I feel a sense of relaxation through this sense of control because in reality what we understand now is that there's no such thing as being able to control something someone anything right it's an illusion and this is the beauty of it the creation of this mindset that believes that we can control anything is foolish you are being a fool for thinking you can control anything what kind of things do we think we can control We think we can control what other people think of us. Sometimes we try to believe that there's a version that everyone can see in us. That's foolish. Sometimes we believe that we can have control over things that happen at work. So your own ability to work in a certain way, to have the relationships that surround your work go a certain way. We believe we can control sometimes our environment. Oh, we're going to go to this place. It's going to be exactly like that. We even expect to have a control over nature. We're going to go there. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be perfect. If it isn't, we get angry. (laughs) Because it wasn't sunny. I have the story of this guest that went into an Airbnb once. And at the end of it, they (laughs) wrote a review. They said everything was perfect, except it was cloudy the whole week. So they didn't put five stars because it was cloudy the whole week. The host does not have control over the weather. The guest doesn't have control over the weather. Nobody does. So what is the point in getting frustrated when it isn't sunny or when it's raining? We sometimes believe that we have control over our appearance. I am someone who is very aware of this want of mine to have control over my own appearance. That's foolish. But why is it so important to me? Because the society that we live in puts beauty and status into a pedestal. So we believe that being beautiful and being successful, whatever that might mean, is what you should strive for. You should always look for. So we try to control our appearance. We try not to age physically we use all sorts of cosmetics and surgery and all of these things to control nature (laughs) it's so foolish the funny thing about trying to control everything around you is that when you try to do so you lose control over yourself you lose control over your emotions the more i try to control everything around the more i lost control over my anger and my anxiety and my stress it's a beautiful contradiction (laughs) the reality of the matter is that we have no control we never know what's coming it is stupid trying to control external circumstances 
And the reality of life is that it is chaotic. The reality of this universe is that it's ever changing. We are ever changing. And our desire to control is a major source of suffering for us because the more we try to control something, it will start controlling us. You can think of kids, they're individual beings. And the more you try to control them, the more they will control us. So I recognize in myself a resistance to let go, to let it be, to let it flow. It's important to understand that living from a place of reaction does no good. If you are aware of how you are reacting to things, you regain some control over your own emotion, your own mindset, your own well-being. We have to exercise our letting go of expectations. We have to exercise surrendering. The thing is that control is rooted in fear. If you feel like you are trying to control something, try to root back into what it is that you are fearful of. We are scared of what might happen if we're not in control of it, but you are never in control. It's understandable that we have this fear of not being in control because it is connected to our survival. It is the ego protecting you. If you have no control, your nervous system feels threatened. It's primal survival in a way. So you shouldn't feel guilty about wanting to control everything. You should just bring some awareness of the fact that <laughs> you cannot. There's no way you can. It's almost madness to try and have that control. We want to feel like we have power over everything around us, even external things. Because that would mean that you're relaxed, that you're safe. But even in the safest of environments, even in your own house, you don't really have control of what's going to happen. There could be a tsunami tomorrow or a bomb being dropped. Your country could go to war. The person you live with could die. You could die. There's a sad reality to our lack of control in our lives. But at the same time, there's a freedom in it. Because you realize that your path is going to be traced in a way that you will never really understand until you trace it. If we had control over everything, life would be really boring. There would be no surprises. And there is beauty in the surprise of life. In the surprise that you meet someone and you fall in love. In the surprise that you become pregnant and start a family. In the surprise that you lose your job and you end up doing something that you love even more. Even in the surprises that causes pain because they allow you to learn. They allow you to become more of a whole being. So try to release, try to surrender and at the same time do not punish yourself for feeling like you want to control everything. Because it's part of being human and it's natural. You just want to survive. It is simply because you value your life and that is beautiful. If you condemn your wish to control life, you suppress your feelings. And suppression of emotion and feelings only leads to a burst and an explosion at the end. So practically, what can we do to surrender more? and to stop trying to control everything. The first step, just like with everything, when it comes to self-reflection and living a mindful life, is awareness. So just become aware of that moment where you are trying to control others, circumstances, the future. Just bring awareness to it. And once you do have that awareness, the choice is yours, whether you react instantaneously, or whether you choose to take a breath, take a moment, take some time. Try to understand what it is that you are afraid of and why you are trying to control this certain situation or person. For me, a lot of the control came from wanting to do a perfect job at what I'm doing. But as we're going to talk about next week, there's no such thing as perfection. So I was searching for a state that does not exist and as you understand your fear then you can make the choice to release it to release the need to control to bring back your understanding that there's no such thing that some things in life are not controllable and the more you do this 
the more you will feel like you do have some control over your mindset, over your emotions, over your state of mind. And then you can remember some things that will help you in this change of mindset. First, you can bring back the understanding that in the grand scheme of things, the problem that you are facing, the thing that you are trying to control is relatively very small and not really that important, especially considering the trillions of galaxies out there, the amount of planets and stars, the amount of people. This brings a healthy reality to how small something might be. Even if you think just your life, are you going to remember this problem in five, ten years? Probably not. So don't waste your energy with it. Another thing that you can do to change your mindset when it comes to control is bringing some humor to the situation. So you have this want to control someone else's behavior. Someone that you work with never replies to your messages, doesn't show up on time, and you're trying to control this person, but obviously you cannot, and they have their own way of working that's very different to yours. Bring some humor to the experience of frustration that you feel from trying to change the situation. Tell a friend and laugh about it. Write in your journal and laugh about it, about this part of yourself that feels like it really needs everyone else to be like you, everyone else to work like you work. We're all different. You have no such power. <laughs> you are not a god or a demigod. You're just a human being. You probably have things in your work that piss other people off as well. Bring some humor to the matter. That helps as well to diminish its power over you. You can also, in a way, disconnect the part of you that is very controlling to your own self. So you can name it. Oh, it's John. John is the part of me that loves controlling everyone. So when you feel that this need is like coming up, just tell John to slow down, you know, relax. There's no need to stress about small little things. Tell John to chill. The more you distance yourself from this part of yourself, the less control over you it will have. Another hack that you can use is to remember that most of the things that you worry about will never happen. They're in the future, they've been imagined in your head, they're not going to happen. It's also helpful to look at Stoic philosophy. They talk a lot about control and releasing that need to control. The philosopher Epictetus wrote, some things are within our power while others are not. Within our power are opinion, motivation, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever is of our own doing. Not within our power are our body, our property, reputation, office, and in a word, whatever is not of our doing. So remember everything that's external from you, everything that's outside of you, you cannot control. It's not within your power. It is foolish to try to. So I want you this week to try and bring some awareness to the controlling parts of yourself. Take some time to really become mindful of those expectations that you set on yourself, on others around you, on specific situations and outcomes. The reality of it is that we have no control. Let's enjoy that reality. Let's enjoy in sitting in this freedom of release. I love you very much and I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys next week when we talk about perfectionism. All right, bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. All the links are written down on the show notes as well as resources for anyone struggling with their mental health. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when we release new episodes. Also, feel free to share our podcast with your friends and family. And if you'd like to get involved, explore our content or support our work, visit our website www.youarelight.earth That's Y-O-U-R light.earth also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at u.r.light. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.